Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a very challenging disease process. It's challenging because it's difficult to diagnose and it can be difficult to manage. IPF is a chronic scarring disease of the lungs that causes problems with breathing, shortness of breath, low oxygen levels, and ultimately death for many of the people who develop it. The median survival is less than three years from the time of diagnosis. There isn't a single test that will give you a diagnosis of IPF. Patients with IPF commonly have crackles on exam, and oftentimes that can be the first and only manifestation at the beginning. The original descriptions of, uh, of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis actually relate back to the 1930s at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, there were a series of patients who had a rapidly progressive uh, fibrosis of the lungs and succumbed to it. And there were autopsy studies done. These really showed scarring and injury to the lungs. Approximately 100,000 Americans suffer from IPF, with an estimated 40,000 deaths per year the same number of annual deaths from breast cancer. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis happens mostly in older people. In fact, more than half of the people are over the age of 65. It tends to happen a little bit more often in men, more often in people who smoked or had exposures like dusty environments. And as you get older, the chance of it happening keeps going up. So the prevalence ascends with each decade of age once you're past the age of 50. One of the biggest challenges in diagnosing and caring for patients uh, with pulmonary fibrosis is distinguishing pulmonary fibrosis from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is just one of the causes of pulmonary fibrosis. You can get pulmonary fibrosis from a number of different reasons, but idiopathic, it really, it really is a functional term in that there's no reason that we can identify for pulmonary fibrosis to be there. So we call it idiopathic. But much of the research, particularly over the last decade, identifying genetic causes, has led many uh, thought leaders to begin to propose that maybe we need to change the term from idiopathic. Much more work needs to be done but I really believe we're on the right track now in terms of better understanding the pathogenesis of IPF and hopefully will lead to more tailored therapies. And I wondered what you thought, if, if you can make this into IPF or if you... If we can't find a known association, then we have to go into other data, mostly the high-resolution chest CT, uh, which really has emerged in the past decade or two as a very important diagnostic tool and one that allows us to make a confident diagnosis quite a bit of the time. One of the biggest challenges in managing patients with IPF is predicting the future. All of our patients want to know how long they're going to live, what's going to happen to them. And the challenge with IPF is the disease progression is variable. If you have IPF, you will progress, but we don't know when. Some patients can progress very slowly over several years. Generally within three to five years, the disease gets a, a good head of steam up, but sometimes it can take that long. On the other end of the spectrum, patients can have what we call an, ex an acute exacerbation, which is an abrupt worsening where patients can progress over weeks to months. Hi guys. Hi. Hey, how are you, Dr. Tall? Good. Nice Good. to see you. How you doing? Jim Kosicki is a retired actor, diagnosed with IPF about a year ago. All right, take some deep breaths for me in and out through your mouth. He has recently suffered a severe exacerbation. The course of the disease that we see in Mr. Kosicki is certainly more typical than we would like it to be. He's had a pretty accelerated course in the last year, and, and that's been punctuated by this exacerbation. Many patients don't survive their exacerbation, and so in some senses, he was lucky. Treatment approaches really changed a lot in the past several years with the approval of two antifibrotic medications by the Food and Drug Administration. We do know that using the antifibrotics in early disease in patients who have very mild disease seems to be just as efficacious as using it in the patients who had more moderate to severe, to severe disease that were included in the trials. And so I think that many physicians now would advocate using those medications early on as soon as the diagnosis of IPF is made. I would tell you that when you're at home, leave your oxygen on at 
six or eight, whatever. IPF is now much more on the radar. People are living longer and longer in much better condition. So uh, continuing to uh, support IPF research, heighten awareness so that we do find new drugs that will eventually cure idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis so pe patients can live well into their 80s and 90s uh, with a good quality of, of life, like happens in other diseases. IPF um, really is a disease that deserves more attention. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.